What's happening, my good feline loving friends? Jackson Galaxy, your cat daddy here today. The iPad is out. What does that mean? That means that you've been sending me in questions and today I answer one of them. Today's question comes from Jillian. Jillian's got three cats and a very specific question. Let's watch that question. Hi Jackson, my name is Jillian. I have three cats, Binks, Lily, and Peanut Butter. Binks, who is the youngest of the three cats I own, has decided that she no longer wants to poop or defecate in the litter boxes. And I am out of things to try. In this room here, this is the problem room where she poops usually anywhere over here in front of it sometimes on the pad but mostly on the carpeting same over here i don't know like i said I'm, I'm not quite sure what to try at this point i have two over here yes they are right next to each other but i had one upstairs in the laundry room and nobody used it this is banks she's my foodie and my chatterbox this is Peanut Butter. He's the newest member. He's kind of ancient. He's about 19 years old. This is Lily. Four litter boxes, three cats. I have taken Binks to the vet. Everything checked out. She was very healthy, albeit a little bit of a chonk. Any help is appreciated. And I'm at my wit's end and I just, I don't know what else to do about it. And I don't know how to fix it anymore. So please help anything, please. I would appreciate it. All right, well in the interim, I have visitors. They're like, are you talking about cat poop? We do that all the time. <laughs> We're kittens. <laughs> That's all we know is eat and poop and sleep and pee. The life of a kitten. Anyhow, so Jillian's issue, there's a few things that, that I always want to pull out of the question. The first thing is when she says this. Binks has decided that she no longer wants to poop or defecate in the litter boxes. Okay, so what that is, is Binks decided to stop using the litter box, which is to say that at some point, Binks was using the litter box to poop. That's a really important thing. So that means that something along the way caused Binks to say, you know what, I can't go here anymore. Now here's the other really important fact right here. In this room here, because this is the problem room where she poops, usually anywhere over here, in front of it, sometimes on the pad, but mostly on the carpeting. We have plenty of litter boxes and Jillian has done all the right things, but now she's pointing to where Binks is going to poop and it's right outside the litter box. That's crucial because that tells us that it's probably not a territorial issue. It's probably not something, let's say separation anxiety because Jillian's not at home. It's probably none of those things. Going right outside the box tells me that Binks wants to go in the box, knows that this is where she's gone in the past, knows that this is the natural place for her to go, yet she doesn't want to go in there, she'll go right outside it. And here's a tip for you guys, sometimes when you're looking for the answers, these litter mats can be a problem because what they're there for is to, uh, ostensibly to keep the litter in that general area. Sometimes they advertise that they'll help get litter out from in between the pads and some cats really don't like it. They don't like that sort of pokey feel and it acts as, as a deterrent away from the box. So if you've added a mat in front of the box, then maybe you wanna try in one of your litter boxes not to have the mat at all. Plus, I assume she's had the mats nearby those litter boxes for a while. And again, Binks has decided not to go near the box anymore. And she poops on the mat sometimes. We have ruled out a bunch of stuff already. And let's just have the kicker here, which is... I have taken Binks to the vet. Everything checked out. She was very healthy, albeit a little bit of a chonk. Listen, Jillian, I know you've been to the vet. I know going to the vet is expensive. I'm sorry, but the one thing that I got right now for you is that it's gotta have something to do with Binks's body. Because what she's saying is, I know I'm supposed to go here. I know this is historically where I've gone. I'm conditioned to go in litter, but I'm just not digging that place. Remember that your cat is not going to say, yeah, my belly hurts, uh, oh, it hurts when I poop. Not gonna do that. She's gonna hurt when she's in that place and say that place hurts me, 
and so I'm going to avoid it. But I know I'm supposed to go near here. So here are the culprits that I can I can think of. If you've already gone to the vet and tested her out, that's great. Here's the kind of yucky part, Jillian. I would get a fecal sample and bring that to the vet. On the bright side, it's kind of easy to get a fecal sample because she's not going in the box, but there I am being the king of the silver lining. A lot of times, it's the food that's the culprit. So whether it's uh, you've changed foods recently, you've gone from dry to wet or wet to raw and you've done it a little too fast and your cat's uh, got diarrhea or their poop is just really extra runny or something like that, then that gives you a hint. If that's not the fact, it could be the opposite way around. If your cat's eating too much dry food, then what that food is doing is actually robbing them of hydration. It's actually dehydrating them. I've seen this time and time again. Your cat's poops then become really hard, and that is no fun to get out of your body if you're binks. So they're straining, it hurts to come out, the poops themselves are ultra hard, and that tells you the problem right there. So I would love for you, Jillian, to actually check that out. And if Binks's poop is telling you something one way or another, take that fecal sample, go to the vet, and make sure that you're not dealing with a parasite or something like that. The, the thing I'm seeing here, because I saw your cats, uh, they've got dry food, that dry food's on a timer. Let's take a look at that right there. This is Binks. Uh-huh, caught ya. That's the thing I would look at. Now, I'm sure you would say to me, Jillian, well, Jackson, Binks has been eating this dry food forever and she's been fine. Okay, but for some reason she's not now. And like I said, the biggest hint that I've got here is it's got something physical to do here. There's something going on in Binks's body that makes pooping uncomfortable. And that's where we have to start. Again, you know, you, you go to the vet, you have a general physical done. They're not gonna find anything in that physical unless they palpate her belly and, and she gets really upset. As I have found out for many years doing this, if they're gonna poop right next to the box, if they're gonna pee right next to the box, they're avoiding the box. It's not about anything else, it's about the box. So that's where I would start. And if you've made any other changes around the house that has to do with the litter box, move it back to where it was. One of the things that folks do when their cats are peeing or pooping outside the box, and understandably, they panic. They panic and they're just like, I gotta do something. So they change all of the litter in the house. They change all of the litter boxes. They change the placement. Now we've got another problem, which is that cats don't like change very much. And especially if you're gonna change litter altogether. So for any of you guys who are not dealing with the exact problem that Jillian is dealing with, and you're trying to be a good detective, just do very little experiments. So for instance, instead of just changing the litter, what you would do is add a new litter box in the house and put a new kind of litter in it and see if somehow your cat suddenly goes, all right, well, I don't have a bad association with this litter and they start going there. Then the change that you would make is adding little bits of that litter into the existing litter boxes, little by little, little by little until you've changed over. If it's about location, let's say you've, you've discovered that your new washing machine is making a horrible noise and driving your cats away from, from the litter box. All right, add a new litter box nowhere near the washing machine and then start moving the others away. Now I know that you guys are watching this going, you know, or Jillian is saying, I got three cats and four litter boxes. You're saying five litter boxes? No, what I'm saying is that that's gonna happen in the short run. You're just doing this experiment to see if you can get her to start accepting the box again. Whether that's, like I said, getting rid of a certain litter, even if it's getting rid of a mat, you're gonna get rid of the mat just in one litter box, keep them in the other ones. And that way in your experiments you see, okay, I think it might be this, then you can add or subtract or move and do it slowly. And then eventually you can remove that sort of experimental litter box that we put down. And that's the way to do things, guys. Jillian, you did great by experimenting, by going to the vet, by moving things around, by changing litter, but I think the one place that you might have missed is foods. Do an experiment there, add more wet food to her diet. You feed a lot of dry food, go for some wet, 
get some moisture in her diet, and maybe that'll help out. There are some supplements. The best one that I've used is called Slippery Elm. That could also help by giving her some Slippery Elm just to sort of lube things up a little bit. Again, I'm making the assumption based on the food that she eats and what she's doing about what her poops look like, but I'm not like, you know, the poop genie here. <laughs> I can't like, I, I, it, the, there's a limit to what I can do through video. Just giving you some suggestions. But for everybody else out there, remember when you're doing something like this, forgive the pun, it's a process of elimination. Uh, what you're trying to do is figure out what things have changed in your home. If nothing has changed, go to the vet, first and foremost, and then let them help guide you through it. But the one thing it feels like you haven't done is analyze the quality of the poop itself, how it feels to her to express it from her body. And the fact that she's going right next to the box, man, I'm telling you from years of experience with poop and pee, you know. That's my life. I can tell you that right next to the box is telling you there's, there's something going on with the way she feels and that's why it's she's just avoiding the box itself. So hope that helps you, Jillian. And thanks so much for taking care of your cats so well. Thank you so much for sending in the question. And for all the rest of you, if you want your questions answered, you know, look at what I'm doing here. I'm talking circles around poop. So, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions about your cats. Just send everything right there to that link and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because who doesn't want to get more videos about poop and, and pee and, and cats in all shapes and sizes. And also don't forget to you know, give me a little thumbs up there. And until next time, when I see you, all light, all love, all mojo to you. Yeah.